Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so good to see my brothers and sisters in the house and logged in on Facebook Live. It was good to feel the presence of God in here today. Amen. It ain't nothing like it. It can't be duplicated. Let me tell you something good about you before, uh, before I get into my message. Something good about you that's sitting here today or whether you're sitting here today or you logged in online, you are a keeper of the faith. And the Word of God says without faith it's impossible to please God, right? See, there's a lot going on in this world. People dying, civil unrest, um, all type of crazy stuff going on that, can't, that you can't ignore. But guess what? You still believe. You still believe. You tuning in. See, I think y'all just don't really understand how precious that is. You still believe. Amen. Amen. You still believe. You still put a premium on hearing the word of God because you know that it's our life source. Amen. Hallelujah. You know that greater is he that is in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know that you're more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. If that don't listen, what pastor used to say, if that don't get you, if that don't get your fire going, your wood wet. I like that one. I stole that one. <clears throat> All right. Um, so t- t- the title of today's message is Be Careful Before You Judge, Part 3. I want to try to say it with me. Be careful before you judge, Part 3. How? So I was, I I can't think of a more appropriate time for this word right here. I don't know if you're like me, but it was was probably about a month ago. I was engrossed in CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, protesting. I was just so engrossed in everything. There's so many opinions, and I was having conversations with people about race, about the, a pandemic, and some people was rubbing me the wrong way, and I'm sure I was rubbing some people the wrong way, and I was getting burdened in my spirit. So I had to step back and, and pray and meditate, and that's when God said, this is what I want you to teach. See, I'm not the best listener in the world, so he know if he gets me to talking about something, <laughs> then I'll listen. Hallelujah. So before I go into the context of today's message, what I want to do is give you guys uh, um, just a recap, so to speak, of the first two messages, or as I say, the cliff notes. (laughs) Somebody got that cliff notes? Yeah. I was debating on if I was going to go with that. I I had a lot of corny jokes going on this morning. I had to pray some of them out. Y'all want to hear just one of them before I go in? Go ahead, one. All right, I'm going to hear one of them. You know, one of the saddest things about the pandemic is the church lost its Black Friday. You know what that is? Easter. That's when we get a lot of people that normally wouldn't come to church come to church. So that's our Black Friday. (laughs) All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know. All right, I started to lead that one, but I got a, I got a mixed review. All right, so the first thing that um, the first thing we talked about was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit should be your compass, and the Word of God is your map. Last week we got a real good reminder of how important the Holy Ghost is, right? And if you could ever think of a time where it's more, it's, it's, if it's important, now is the day. You need to be in tune. Hallelujah. And the Word of God should be your map when you're making decisions. If it ain't in the Word of God, hmm. I'm not talking about the remedial decisions. I'm talking about the life-changing decisions. You can't point it out. Mm-mm. You're telling me to go to Kentucky, Michigan? I don't see it on the map. I ain't even talking to you. But you might tell me to go to Albion, 
and I should be going to Detroit. So what that message was about was how you can, if you're not careful, you can take the word of God and fashion it to your own personal agenda. So in that, in that message, I use two different church services, one based on love, one based on judgment. But for today, we're going to talk about the pandemic. Look, I knew I was going to step on a few toes right there, but I just want to show you a couple, and I'm not telling you where to go or where to lean. I'm just going to show you how, if you're not careful, you can take the Word of God and fashion it to your own belief. Anybody interested? Hallelujah. Let's go. So let's read. Let's first turn to the book of Exodus. Because what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give you a couple examples. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, but I just want you to see. I'm going to give you an Old Testament and a New Testament examples. So we're going to the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 22. Hallelujah. I'm in the wrong chapter. <laughs> chapter 12, 22. Thank you, Marquise. I'll tell you, I love that man. All right. Verse 22. This is about the Passover. Very familiar passage if you've been in church for a while. And you shall take a bunch of hesop, dip it in blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin, and you shall go outside and show yourself mighty because you are blessed, you are more than a conqueror, and uh, the Lord will pass through and strike, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and you will see that and witness that and tell them outside about his glory. Wait a minute, that's not what it say? Okay, no wonder y'all not saying amen. See, that's why I like, I love this church. Some people just say amen regardless, right? Everybody, like, amen. So now let's read what it really says. All right. Dip it in blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of this house until morning. None of you. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. This is godly instruction to stay in the house. Isn't this? this? It's not me. It's not Clifton. Amen? Amen. So if you hocked up on faith or self-righteousness and you get angry at somebody that's not, don't get angry. Just think about it. All right. So now let's move on to Exodus chapter 14. See, it got quiet. I like, sometimes I like when it's quiet. Sometimes I get nervous. <laughs> so we go to Exodus chapter 14, verse 21. Because here's, so here's, the, here's the opposing side. So I told you about the side of where you feel like the Lord has blessed you in righteousness, but here's the opposing side. You ain't listening to science. You ain't paying attention to what's going on. You just going out there in dumb faith and just doing what you want to do. So let's see. Verse 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and nothing happened because it wasn't a rod that could move the sea. And, amen? What? That's not what happened? Okay, all right. Well, let me read this again then. Let's read this again. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground and the waters were a wall to them 
on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them in the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now, you're talking about some science debacles right there. You know how quick a chariot can catch somebody walking? Do you know how much faith it takes to walk through the sea? This is a life and death situation where the Lord worked a miracle. And see, the, the killing part is a lot of times if we're not attuned to what God is saying in life and death situations, death is the outcome. It didn't say he parted the Red Sea and they had time to think about it and plan and look and see if they could, if they could uh, concoct a boat and go to the other side. It said, people, it said the Egyptians were coming. <laughs> Amen. Right now. All right. So praise God. So let's move on to New Testament. We're going to talk about Jesus. I think Jesus is pretty important, right? Amen. 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 Our Lord and Savior. So let's move on to Matthew chapter 2. Glory to God. So we're in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod would seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother and stood in the window and said, We are the blessed of the Lord. No evil shall befall us and nothing will happen to us. Amen. Uh, see, uh, I'm glad y'all support me, but that ain't what it say. All right. So it says, When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. So he didn't, he didn't just go there. They stayed there for a while. And is, is, this not, is the child he referring to not Jesus? Yes, it is. And again, I'm not saying that to discourage people who uh, who is built, who, whose faith built up and walking in righteousness. I'm not saying that to discourage people, but I am saying that to discourage because I've been uh, privy to quite a few discussions with people and watching it. People are adamant and angry at people who don't see it the, the way that they see it. Shouldn't be the case. So this is why we got to be careful before we judge. But I'm not going to stop there. Hallelujah. So let's look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. All right. When he had come down from the mountains, oh, I'm sorry, I still have some pages turning. You got to say amen. 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 When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus told that man, are you not aware of social distancing? You are too close. I will pray for you from a distance. Back up. Wait a minute, that's not what it said, is it? Oh, okay, okay. How about this? Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. 
So when we see this, sometimes I think we kind of, I, I don't know, you may, maybe you, you're a deeper thinker than I am. I really thought about that in terms of how we see today. When we, people come up and they get healed, and we, you know, I'm thinking about modern medicine. It's a, it's, a, it's a miracle, but it's not a real miracle. But when you go back and you think about context, leprosy was thought to be highly contagious. If you, matter of fact, if you were a leper, you couldn't go certain places. It was a fact. And, and not only was, see, now here we go, ignoring the science again for the people that want to be down Christians for ignoring the science. That's ignoring the science. And on top of that, it wasn't popular because a lot of believers at the time believed that, I did use that double negative, I was trying to get away from that. Well, they believed that leprosy was God's judgment on people. So not only are you touching somebody, uh, you ignoring science, and you doing what's unpopular to the believers. Do you, can, can you really think of the magnitude of that? Just, you know... It would probably be the equivalent of us just coming up to you and snatching your mask off and putting their hands on you. <laughs> I pray the Lord don't ask me to do something like that because I'll do it. <laughs> he told me to do it, I'll do it. I might get punched or you might get healed. But uh, <laughs> one of the two. Amen. Glory, glory. Okay, so it's, and there are more examples, but the, the, point, the point of this... this uh, Listen, thanks to God, if there ever was a time that we needed each other, it's now. It's now. There are some things that we uh, disagree on, but there's something we all agree on. We agree that Jesus is Lord. Amen, right? And we can work it out and we can work through these things. But you need that Holy Ghost. You need it. You need to be in tune. You need to be. See, in times of life and death, it's not time to slumber. I, listen, I probably pray more, and I pray that I keep this. When times go back normal, I want to keep this same prayer life. But I'm in tune like, Lord, should I go here? Should I do this? Will I offend somebody with my mask? Talk to me. Will I offend somebody without it? Talk to me. Praise Lord. Okay, another thing you got to remember is you are not God. Whoa. Look, it don't matter how smart you are, how many miracles you did. <laughs> we are not God. Plus, God has what I call a built-in cheat code. Y'all want to know what that built-in cheat code is? There's several examples, but for now, let's turn to the book of Micah, chapter 7. Y'all want to know why I chose Micah? Because Micah Willis is cool. <laughs> no other reason. <laughs> but I also love this scripture. He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities, cast our sins into the depths of the sea. He don't just forget about it. He launched that sucker. <laughs> it's like, Lord, forgive me. I repent of my sins. He like, okay. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> we don't have that. Probably good we don't because some people will take advantage of us, but <laughs> we don't have that. And as, as great as we are and blessed and, and much word as we know, a lot of times our experience um, gives us either a certain caution or a certain reservation, kind of the same word, but you get what I'm saying. Um, so that's something we need to just remember. When something or something or someone is bothering us, uh, we need to remember we're not God. We need to seek God on this because we, I do know God doesn't want us resting in anger. All right. So the next, the next thing was um, 
that we are ambassadors of God. Yes, we are ambassadors of God. We may be the only example that people see of God. That's not, that may not be fair, but it's true. I was blessed to have some good, good ambassadors when I first came in. I tell you all the time, Pastor Cox was a good example of an ambassador. Pastors Carl and uh, Carmen and Al Davis, I call them Carl, mix their names up. They were great examples of ambassadors. It's not a, it's not a matter of being perfect, but it, I saw that they were serious about it. And they were always willing to talk to me. And I saw what the Lord did to Pastor Noah's Will- Noah Willis. And I figured if God can do something with him, <laughs> I'm sorry, I love you. That's a little payback, just a little payback. He's going to get me back. But no, he, he, you know, you know he, is, he has been instrumental in my life. All jokes aside, he know it. I love him. I'm so fortunate to have him in my life. And uh, in all sincerity, when I saw, seeing his seriousness and willingness to move forward w- was huge to me because he already had that foundational relationship with me and could talk to me in ways that other people couldn't. So I thank him for that. And we must remember that when we're angry about stuff, because you, I don't, unless you're just superhuman, there's been some things that probably touched you one way or another. Whether it's a response to racism, a lack of response to racism, uh, a response to coronavirus politics, I'm not saying Democrat or Republican, but both parties haven't handled this best um, in the best manner. Something that's touched you in a manner that probably made you a little angry. So, but we need to be, uh, we need to be in remembrance that we are ambassadors of God in, in how we deal with these situations. Amen. All right, number four, we, we need them. We need them. We members of one body. Um, one of the things that I said about today's time that that makes this such a challenge to us is that we don't really need people in the natural in the way that they needed each other uh, back in biblical times. They did, they, they lived, they, economy was based on a lot of farming and so they really needed each other. Communities needed each other more so than what we do now. But we need each other in the spirit and emotionally. We really do. Um, a lot of times when we're lacking, we're lacking because we're trying to do something we're not equipped to do. When somebody else is equipped to do it and can do it with ease, but they're not here. You say, say it again. Say it again. See, we're lacking because we're doing something we're not equipped to do. And somebody that can do it and do it with ease is not doing it. And here's the part where we got to be careful not to judge. Because we can turn that person away because we don't like what we see. So we need to be careful. I'm not saying you don't need to judge. That's why I said be careful. Because we do have to make judgments. We do. But if you see things the way you're supposed to see it, you'll be a little bit more careful to, to, before you uh, kick somebody out of church or stop dealing with somebody. If you really saw them the way God intends you to see them, you will have a little more compassion. You would be like, okay, hold on, brother. That's my elbow. <laughs> you know, if he go, this is how I'm going to be every week. <laughs> but you don't see that, so... <laughs> Somebody got that way, man. All right. So, and then we moved on to, um, we looked at when the lady was uh, caught in adultery and she was brought forward to be stoned. And we pulled three things, at least three things that I think was very important out of that passage, both in the natural and in the spirit. So one of the first things was bring it to God and be open to what he has to say. See, the scribes and the Pharisees, if you read that initially, you, you know what their motives was. 
right? But the thing that they did was they brought it to God and they brought the word with them. See, it, 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 this, at first when, I, you know, when I'm reading this initially, when I first got saved, I'm like, those dirty dogs, those dirty rascals, they're trying to set Jesus up. That's what they're trying to do. But when you think about it and meditate and pray on it, you've probably done that too. They like, no, I haven't. Have you ever prayed for some, something or something to happen in a situation? You brought some word and some scripture into, in the fray. You're like, Lord, I am the head, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. No weapon for me. Look, you, you mad at somebody because so you're fashioning this prayer to, for God's judgment to happen in this atmosphere. Isn't that what they did? We can do that. I know I could. Like, Lord, move, remove this person. They get on my nerves every day. Every day. I ain't saying kill them. I'm just saying get them out of my life. <laughs> but you also had to be, see, the one thing about it, they were, they were open to what God has to say. And most of the time, God doesn't tell us what we want. It's just true. A lot of times, you know, if I'm mad at my wife and I'm praying to the Lord to give her wisdom, he tells me to apologize. <laughs> I'm like, well, listen, Lord, that ain't what I came to you for. I laid out a clear scenario where she was wrong and she need wisdom. So he took those. So what he told them was he would out see and cast the first stone. And they were open to hear that. And guess what? Guess how many stones got thrown? They could have just been like, anyway, look, I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want everybody to know I'm in sin. I'm going to throw this stone. Amen. So that's something we got to remember. Take it to the Lord, even if we're mad. And be open to hear what he got to say, even if we don't like it. And if you're married, you got to really learn that. <laughs> if you're thinking about getting married, learn it, love it, live it. <laughs> Amen. All right. Another thing we learned out of that was, and this one, this is so, it blessed me so much. That you have no accusers. I don't want to get too hyped because I'll I, I go into a preach mode on this real quick. And this is not where I'm going. But listen, the woman was standing there guilty. There was no dispute in that. And when the Lord asked her, where are these accusers of yours? He was pointing out to her, no one's worthy. Nobody. Nobody. If that ain't some freedom for you, listen, when you decide that you want to live for the Lord, I don't care if it's, I don't care if you just left the crack house. On your way up out of there, I'm living for Jesus. Can't nobody tell me different. Because what did the Lord say? He said, I don't condemn you. Neither. And any time if that come back, you say the same thing. I have no accusers. Hallelujah. You know how blessed that is? That's so blessed. Mm. And the last thing we learned is you may have to walk alone. Your first steps may have to be alone. See, when, it, when, when, it, when they drop the stones... They didn't go over there and hug her and say, I'm sorry. Oh, we embarrassed you. We pulled you out here and put your business out in the street. We're so sorry. We love you. Come with us. They dropped the stones and left. So guess what? Your first steps might have to be alone. Hallelujah. Even, even the Lord just said, go and see him no more. I, you know, I believe that that's because of that cheat code. I believe that once he forgave her, he didn't remember what happened. So he, he was just like, okay, you go ahead and sin no more. I know you was in sin, but I don't remember all the rest of that stuff. So you just go ahead. That's my belief. So pray on it. If, it's, if I'm wrong, you can talk to me later. I understand. I won't get mad. Hallelujah. 
so now we learn learning some really, some, some really good things about not only how to judge others, but how to judge ourselves. Because um, one of the things that's really rampant, it's been rampant, but it's ratcheted up another gear since this uh, pandemic is depression. And we've been forced into isolation, so to speak. So you really have to be in tune with how you judge yourself, too, and remember that God loves you and, and, and seek his face if you're going through some stuff. I've been fortunate enough, blessed enough, and I think, like, a lot of you guys are here today to be, to, to be able to call you guys and, and talk to you and hear what's going on. And let me tell you something about Christians, and I'm the number one, I'm number one guilty offender myself. We don't really ask for help. I think people in general don't ask for help, but Christians at a whole nother level. <laughs> we be trying to faith walk out some stuff and don't even have to. Let me give you a very small remedial example. I needed a stove in my house. And I'll, I'll pray for anything. And I'm like, Lord, you're going to give us a stove. You're going to give us the money, the finances to do this. And um, I ain't tell nobody. People ask you, hey, brother, you need something? No, I'm good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good. I'm getting it. It's on its way. It's on its way. <laughs> and one of the brothers, uh, he was moving, and he said, I got a brand new stove for you right here. You can have it. Had I, I've been helping him move before that. Had I said something, it might have been easy. A lot of times when we, we don't talk to each other, we don't. We don't have confidence that we could, we could tell things that we need, and we hold on to it. I tell you the one thing I said when I would call people week one. Hey, how you doing? I'm blessed. It's good. We love you. I love you too. Week two. How you doing? I'm good. I'm blessed. We love you. I love you too. Week three. How you doing? I'm good, but can you pray for this? I was like, oh, Yes. Yes, I can. And while you're at it, can you pray for me? Because a lot of times, and I'll tell you what's blessed about our, uh, our ministry, when I call people, like my brother Jamar, his energy was so good every time. I'd be like, man, I got to call him more often. I call, or I call Patricia, and we get to praying and stuff. And you call people, and um, even Martha, she put a positive spin on COVID-19 that I hadn't thought about. She said, people finally giving you personal space. I say, yeah, you know what? That's right. <laughs> you whip that mask off, you can really get some space. <laughs> you throw a cough in, you might get your whole aisle. <laughs> oh, God, stop me. All right, so <laughs> glory to God. But that is true. I was like, I hadn't thought about that because I'm a person who really do not like personal space invaders. And my people don't do that as much. So I hope we kind of keep that a little bit. Not the dis social distance part, but that all up in my face and all up close to me, bumping you with the cart at the grocery store, that type of stuff, don't happen no more. So praise God. I hope we keep that when we get out of this. Some form of at least respect. You know, people will hit you and be mad at you. All right. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. Isn't God awesome? Amen. That's what I'm saying. When I, was, when I was trying to convey to you guys, and I, I don't know if I did, just how blessed you are to keep the faith. But not only that, you have joy. And a lot of people don't have it. They just don't. So that's so blessed. And I'm so, that's why I said I feel fortunate to serve in the army of God with you guys. First thing this morning, a text from my brother Marquise. First thing in the morning. On the prayer line yesterday, LaShonda was like, look, man, your energy low. <laughs> you ought to be thankful. I say, you're right. See, that's soldiers right there. Okay, so for today, the one thing I want to try to get across is, if you got your Bibles, turn to Romans 15, chapter 1. I'm looking at the time because, you know, one thing I learned when, it, 
when a preacher or a speaker tell you a few minutes, you can add a few minutes to that. So I'm not, I'm not going to say a few minutes, but I am going to try to wrap this up pretty quickly. All right. So we in Romans. Chapter 15, verse 1. When we then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. So let me stop right there for one second. For a long time, I never really uh, understood how difficult this was. If you think about it, in its whole, a lot of times when we view people, we view people, we view them as a, as a whole. Like we see, if we see somebody that exhibits, somebody know the word of God, they live in their life right, um, they doing things that you think are honorable and acceptable to God, you just view this person as a strong person, a pillar of God. I've had conversations with people. They'd be like, I just want to get on that level, right? But we don't think about it in terms of areas, do we? And sometimes when we put somebody at a, a level of strength and they, do, and they come short on something, we get real upset with them and real angry because it's difficult. I was watching um, T.D. Jakes, and he, he, talk, he talked about this. He talked about when he met with a pastor who was arrogant. And he said it just burned him up. He said the whole ride home, he just could not believe how this guy was so arrogant. How could he be so arrogant as a pastor? And he said, guess what? The Holy Ghost convicted him. And say, you just like that because that's not your area of weakness. Now, how true is that? Because see, when, like, you would just think, especially if this is your area of strength. So you would think if this man or this woman has, they know the word of God. They, somebody, they live in their life right. They live in clean and they doing all these things, you would just think that compassion is just a given. It's nothing they have to work on, right? It's just, it's just what you think, right? May not be. Maybe something that they have to work on. Maybe a shortcoming. That's another thing you got to learn if you're married. I'm, I think I'm giving y'all some married tidbits, too. It took me a long time to learn this. I hope that you newlyweds are smarter than me because some areas, my wife just flat out better at. And it's usually the area that touch, that touch a nerve. <laughs> you, be sitting there, you be sitting there thinking like, is she against me? <laughs> you know, I got this clear. This is, where is her compassion? We opposite in that. She can see something and be like, nope. <laughs> I'll be like, well, wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. You don't see that? This, he might be on drugs, but he loves the Lord, so we're going to get him some. He's going to steal our stuff. <laughs> that's a funny example, but that's true. It's true in that. And wh how that manifests in church a lot of times is <clears throat> if somebody, and unfortunately it's usually a pastor or somebody in leadership, if they don't fit the build in the area that you're passionate about, the first thing you want to do is beeline. You want to leave. You're, or you're highly offended. You don't even look at all the good stuff that they've done or what you can learn from it. You, can get, you just get offended. Well, at least I do. <laughs> I don't know much. That's another thing. She said I'm sensitive. It took me a long time to, to realize that I might be sensitive. That's okay. <laughs> Glory. 
Because if we sit down and talk it out, we can find a good middle ground. Amen. But that's important. That's, that's really important for us, especially in navigating today's time. I'm joking. I'm being silly about it. But it's very important because we're navigating something totally different right now. You look in the, the congregation now, half of us got on masks, half of us don't. But all of us love the Lord. Whoo, all of us, right? Okay, let me just, let, we got time. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I mean, chapter 12, I'm sorry. First Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 4. You got to say amen. amen. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Soak that up for a hot second. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Soak it up. Sop it in. Sop it in. Sop it in. Sop it in. And there are diversity of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. Did, 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 did you soak that up? Mm. So let me skip down a little bit. We're going to go to verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. One of the reasons why, and this is why, listen, I want to just, just say a, a, a special thanks and praise God for... Uh, Sister Toya and, and uh, Prophet Samuel coming up here, speaking what the Lord put on their heart. Because though, that's important. I think we got spoiled a little bit, and we kind of like, oh, that sounds nice, the victory. That is, that's, that's cute. Put them on the shoulder. That's a word. Some of us need to be lifted up. Because we don't see what's going on. We see a lot of stuff. Depending on who you talk to, uh, Black Lives Matter is a radical group or they're a group about justice and equality. So you want to say, God, lift me up. Help me see what the real truth is. That's what I mean about the importance of, of, of hearing the word of God and us functioning together as a member of one body. That's how we can start getting some clarity on this thing here. Sitting down and listening and praying and talking with each other. See, the, the word of God said that he gave us prophets, teachers, preachers, for the, uh, the evangelists, for the equipping of the saints, right? Not just pastors. Amen? Some people don't want to hear it unless it comes from a pastor. So let's pay attention. Let's, let's, let's watch. Amen. I hope, are y'all getting something today? Are y'all getting some food? I know we laughed. And I'm glad y'all laughed, whether it was forced or real. I appreciate it. Amen. But let's, let me get down to the goal and then we can wrap this thing up. So let's go back to Romans chapter 15. So we already kind of got it there. Some of us have different gifts, right? We got it. We got it that some of us have different areas of strengths. Right? We don't all get, I was about to mess with you, Tyrone. I owe you one. Praise God. God quickened me. 
I'll tell you later. <laughs> oh, man. So we in Romans chapter 15. We already read verse 1 about strong, bear with the shortcomings of the weak, and not to please ourselves. And now, as soon as I get here, don't leave me, y'all. All right. Matter of fact, I'm going to read verse 2 to 6, and then we're going to pray and we're going to get out of here. Verse 2, let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded towards one another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to throw in verse 7 for a bonus. Therefore, receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. So, well, verse, verse 5 says, Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded towards one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, we don't have to agree. We don't necessarily have to agree. Should you wear a mask or should you? Do we have to agree? But guess what we did today, and I was so proud of it. We lifted up the name of the Lord. We glorified God. and we See, we, see when you like-minded towards one another, like-minded don't necessarily mean we have to think the same or well, it would have been specific. But we have to be like-minded. We have to be willing to glorify God together yeah. until this thing is worked out. So if you can't agree, if you can't agree with me telling you, take your mask off, lay hands on the sick, can you agree with me that Jesus is still Lord? Yeah. Can you agree with me to glorify him? If you can't agree with me that I want a social distance, that I want you to step back a little bit, that I want you to show love for others, can you agree with me that we can glorify God? Can you agree with me that you have enough faith equity that no matter what happened, you still know God is God. God has done enough for you in your life to where even when you don't understand things, you can stand up and say, I know it's coming. I know you got me. Lord, I ain't mad at this person. I'm not upset. I'm not dismissing what they say. That's the other part about it. When, when people that's appointed prophets speak, you listen. Even if it's contrary to what you believe. Take it home. Meditate on it. That's another thing they had right back in the, um, as we say, back in the day. Prophets had a very strong voice. Very strong voice. They would listen. It ain't a, oh, that's cute. I think that's what we do. That is so cute. A kid on top of a shoulder. I like that. No, man, that's a vision. That's something you take home. Ask God, pick me up, help me look at it. Because I'm sure, unless you, unless you just, and maybe you are. 
I believe anything is possible. I believe some people walk in perfection. I know that some people don't agree with that, but I believe it's possible. I will tell you it's not me. It's a goal. <laughs> but I believe anything is possible with the Lord. But if you're in a point where you're in contention or you're in confusion, then take that word and take it home and meditate on it. Say, lift me up, Lord, where I can see what's going on because I can't see through the masses. So glory to God. I won't belabor this no more. I'm so thankful and I hope that you got something out of this. I hope that if you were stressed about it or if you had any anger or any anxiety about it, that you take this back and you remember first and foremost that you love your brothers and sisters in Christ and that you can sit down and meditate and hear from God. Either that or somebody would be, meet, uh, be waiting for me in the parking lot to debate with me. <laughs> I'm not doing that today. Maybe tomorrow, <laughs> but not today. So I thank you. That's all I have. I love you guys, and I appreciate you.